Greetings, my brothers and sisters, and we are so glad that you have tuned in to the Christ is the Answers Ministries TV broadcast. I believe that this broadcast is going to be a great blessing to you, so if you would get on the phone, call a friend. I'm going to come back at the end of the broadcast. I'm going to pray with you and give you some information of how you can be a blessing to this ministry. Stay tuned. What a joy and a privilege it is that we're coming into your home right now. I'll see you in a few minutes.
number six. Y'all say amen real fast and I can, I can be done. Let's give our driver who drove that wonderful bus. Glad to have him in the house. In the book of Isaiah, this being men's day, I'm not going to be before you long. I'll be finished as soon as I get through. The book of Isaiah chapter, I'm going to have to just cut it in half. Because God has already moved. And, but we do need a word. Keep us encouraged. Isaiah number 6. Verse number 8 is where I'm just going to take one verse for our men service tonight. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, touch yourself and say, what he say? My wise half brother is still sitting back. Okay. Let's all stand for the meaning of the word. I thought everybody was standing by apology. Isaiah is in the Old Testament. Psalm is not a chapter. Number six, verse eight. Everybody there? <laughs> then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Say, what did he say? What did he say? Then they say, Question. question. Whom shall I send? Whom shall I send? And, who will go for us? and who will go for us? And I said, yeah, Be careful what you get ready to say. Oh, yeah, right, right, right. Man. Don't lie up in this month tonight. Right, 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 right. Tell somebody, say, Be careful what I say. Alright, because I think people talk too much. And when they talk too much, you don't know what you're talking about. And then you prop the lie up on the prop for lie. Right? So say, be careful what I say. And tell them, say, I gotta be careful with you. With the words that I speak to you. Do you know words? You heard. children sticks and stones they break my bones but I found out something names don't hurt when you have reached a level of maturity with God I may have done what they say I did but I am not who they say I am okay so it said and I said here am I Father, in Jesus' name, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be accepted on my sight. Oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer in Jesus' name. Tell somebody and say, here we grow again. Here we grow again. Now you may be seated the next time you get up, it will be on your own. I want to speak to these men today very briefly to encourage them. And I want to use as a topic, here we grow again, but I want to use as a subtopic that you might have heard it on Sunday night football. And you might have heard it on Monday night football. Just before they get into the game, they have the announcers. And they use this phrase, come on, man. So that's what my subject is tonight. <laughs> Come on, man. Okay. All right. All right. Give it to us today. I wish I had time to go through the historicity of what the word is speaking about pertaining to the man because we all understand that it all starts with the genesis of our life, with the genesis of where God created man and he created him in his own image and his likeness. Right. And because God did that, we are in a situation today where men have lost their identity of knowing who they are and whose they are and who they belong to. James Brown said some years ago, and he came out with, this is a man's world. And see, but what, what James didn't understand is that at the time men were men. 
real men work. Real men lost their lives. Real men took care of their home. Real men, they there was some back in the day that was just like Methuselah. Methuselah lived 969 years. He was just 31 years from being a thousand years old, which means that a thousand years is like one day with God. Right, right. He missed it by 31 years. That's right, Bishop. And so by him missing out on that, Methuselah did what the Bible said, because there's not really a whole lot about Methuselah. The Bible only speaks of three things about a man who lived 969 years. He lived, he had babies, and he died. That's all they said, bro. That's all they said. How can you live 969 years and have nothing in your resume? Right, uh, right. Don't get mad at Methuselah. Check out the age that you are now. What have and are you doing with the life that he has given you and afforded you? It's easy to point at somebody else and say what they're not doing and what they should be doing. And the very fact of it is, if there's paper gum or candy wrappers on the church floor, you shouldn't have to wait for the janitor because it's not your job. You stepped over it. So you would be very, very upset if you sat in the gum that you didn't pick up. So it's just not somebody's the janitor's job. It's everybody's job because we are the body of Christ. Help him, sir. Help him, sir. So when we understand what God had done with man and gave man everything that he needed, uh -huh. he presented it before and created it before he even brought man on the scene. Uh -huh. The only thing that God is expected from man is a praise. That's it. And if we just give him what he needs and what he wants, you can have everything you desire. Right. Come on, sir. Because he said, I will give you your heart Desire. That's what he said, sir. And there's some things that we get, and some things that we want, and some things you know you shouldn't have, but some things that you think you need. Uh -oh. Only to when you get it, find out you didn't want it, nor do you need it. But more importantly than that, you find out you don't even like it. Uh -oh. Uh -oh, sir. But you get you 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 get along just to do certain things to be a pleaser. All right. And what we have turned into is people pleaser. Where God is rejecting our praise. For the Bible says in Psalms 150, he said, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. And then so it's not hard enough for a drunk or a prostitute or anybody to give God praise. You can, you can just go ahead and dance without even feeling anything. Come on, sir. Now for all of you who ain't been saved all your life, those who've been saved and came out the womb dancing and speaking in tongues, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to some folks who was going to school in high school and junior high that knew what a nickel noonday dance was. What you said? Man. You remember the noonday dances that you paid a nickel to get in for the PTA because of little things that they did. And you had a little bit of money to goose certain little things. So what happened was that when you go into the dance, you didn't care who was dancing. As soon as you paid your nickel, walked in, you said, that's my dream. <laughs> what you said? What you said? <laughs> You would just you just walked in there. I'll take it so It's might be too deep for the sanctified thing. Come on, Bishop. You know, because see, I ain't been saved all my life. I, I, I know what a Heineken is. I know what Hennessy is. I know what a blunt is. I know what pills are. I know what it means to get high. I know what y'all ain't gonna work with me. I know what it means to get drunk and go home and then grab the, the, the white. God and call it Earl. Earl. I know what that's like. Come on, man. What do you say? I might be just a little bit. I might be too heavy to for some of these young folks. We know you. We know you. See, because back in the day, we just had Marvin Gaye and the old Jays and the Temptations, and we knew what the lyrics was. That, you know, the midnight train of July. Come on, man. See, you know, all this stuff they doing now.
with a headache. Migraine number six. Yeah. So we have lost our identity. My God. So when God created man, I gotta rush through this. Uh, I have to puzzle this all together. Um, because when God created man, he gave man responsibility and he gave man accountability. Now one of the things that you got to understand, if God called you to do anything, you are responsible for your call. Yes, sir. Yes. That's right. And you are accountable to the call. Yes, sir. Not the people, yes, sir. but to the 